Hey Algebra 2, today I'm going to teach you how to find the inverse of a function. So, the notes and the definition say the inverse of a function is if the ordered pairs are reversed. Okay, so an ordered pair is just simply x, y. And if they're reversed, we're just going to switch them. Switch x and y. We're going to keep coming back to this because when we find the inverse later, that is all we're doing. Switch x and y. So if you have this one function, r is um, these three ordered pairs, find the inverse of it. All right, so in an ordered pair, the first one's x, the second one's y. So I'm just going to label these to help you out. If you want to find the inverse of it, all you got to do is switch x and y. So the inverse of 1, 2 is 2, 1. The inverse of the ordered pair 3, 8 is 8, 3. And the inverse of 5, 6 is 6, 5. That's all you got to do. Um, we might talk about domain and range uh, later, but not today. If they are graphed, they are symmetrical about the line y equals x. The line y equals x is um, a diagonal line that looks like that. So the inverse, they're like symmetrical about that one. So we have this function, f of x equals 4 minus 3x. And the first thing that you need to do is move it out of function notation, and we're going to write it just using x's and y's. So y equals 4 minus 3x. So first step, rewrite f of x with a y. That's your first step. Step two, to find the inverse, you switch x and y. So now it reads x equals 4 minus 3y. Switch x and y is step two. And then step three is solve for y. So if I want to solve for y, you have to go back and remember how to solve something. So that means we're going to subtract the 4 over to the other side. This reads x minus 4 equals negative 3y. Negative 3 and y are being multiplied together. We undo multiplication by division. So we would have to divide both sides by negative 3. The answer might look like x minus 4 over negative 3 equals y. Or it might, uh, we can also pair every number on top with every number in the bottom. It might look like x over negative 3 minus 4 over negative 3 equals y. And that negative divided by negative um, would change to a positive. Step four, you're going to replace y with f negative one of x. This is called inverse notation. So I'm going to switch the sides of it. f negative one of x equals x over negative three plus four-thirds. So the answer might look like this, or it might look like this. Um, so you need to be aware that these are exactly the same. If we have to end up graphing the line, this is in slope-intercept form, and so um, we might need to do this if we're going to graph it. Number, we'll do number two next. All right, so the very first thing you always want to do is get rid of your function notation, 
and replace that with a Y. This step two says switch X and Y. So X equals negative two over Y minus one. And then we have to solve for Y. So if I want to solve for Y, this is the last thing that you touch. The first thing that you're going to have to do is add one to both sides. X plus one equals negative two over Y. So I want to end up solving for Y, but I really need to get rid of this fraction. So I would probably multiply both sides by Y. Uh, oh, that's not supposed to be there. That's just multiplication equals negative two. Don't distribute this um, because if I want to solve for Y, now I'm going to turn around and I'm going to have to divide both sides by X plus one. So Y equals negative two over X plus one. You can't leave it like that. You have to rewrite it in function notation. Get rid of the y and rewrite it with f negative 1 of x. This shows that you just took the inverse of it. So you have negative 2 over x plus 1. So I didn't break this one up. The main difference is that this has two terms in the denominator, so we would leave it like that. This one only had one term in the denominator, and that we can break up. I am going to do one more, number three, so that I can show you something. Step number one, get rid of function notation or replace it with y. Switch x and y. I want to solve for y now. So this entire numerator is being divided by negative three. I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative three for the sole purpose of canceling out that denominator. So then I have negative three X equals Y minus four. And now I'm gonna add four to both sides and get negative three X plus four equals Y. And then I'm going to replace this with function notation. So I just found the inverse of it. A little later on, it's going to ask you, are these two functions inverses of one another? So I like stretch this up. So on this first one, I took the inverse of a function and I got this. So you'll notice that when I left it in this format, this inverse is this function. And then when I took the inverse of three and I got this, this inverse is exactly the same as this original function. And so when you take the inverse of one function and you get the other, this is what inverse functions look like. So number one and number three are inverse functions because the inverse gets the other function. Uh, to see what number four is, check your notes later. Number five. Find the inverse of a function and then graph it. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this function. Uh, you could do lots of things. You could do slope-intercept. You could make a table of values. I'm going to do slope intercept today. So my y intercept is at negative 2. And then 
my slope is one fourth. That means from this point, I'm going to go up one and over four, or I could go down one and left four. Take a straight edge and connect the dots. So I have a point here at negative 4, negative 3. I have another point at 0, negative 2. And I have another point over here at 4, negative 1. If I want to find the inverse on a graph, really all that I do is once I have a few points plotted, I generally just flip X and Y. So if this point is at negative 4, negative 3, that means its inverse will be at negative 3, negative 4. The original function is at 0, negative 2. Its inverse will be at negative 2, 0. And then the inverse will be at negative 1, 4. So I'm going to graph the inverse now. Negative 3, negative 4. Uh, negative 2, 0. And oops, negative 1, 4. So there's my inverse, and there's my function. Somewhere on the other side, it said that inverses are symmetrical along the line y equals x. So there's the line y equals x. And I could see that if you took this uh, function and you flipped it over that line, that you would get the other one. And then it said that you had to take the inverse of a function. So remember that we switch x and y. And then we're going to solve for y. So the first thing that I would do is add 2 to both sides. x plus 2 equals 1 fourth y. Multiply both sides by 4. So here's something tricky that a lot of people will forget. If you want to multiply the left side by 4, and there's already two terms, you can't just leave it like this or just multiply the x by the 4. you got to remember to distribute. So this would be 4x plus a equals y. And then we need to switch this y into inverse notation. So there's the inverse of it. So if I double check my graph, here's the slope. The slope is 4, and the y-intercept is 8. So the y-intercept, yeah, it kind of looks like it would be going through the 8 if I had a bigger graph. And then my slope is 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Yep, I have a correct graph here. All right, so we're just going to take a few more inverses. And this time, we're going to have some squares and some radicals. And my timer is about ready to end, so I'm going to pause this and start one more video.